What's up, everybody? Hey, it's Jason, and today on this episode of Breaking Down the Stick, we're going to take a close look at the Victrix Pro Fight Stick. Oz, the CEO, was kind enough to send me one over, and after seeing a bunch of pictures online and seeing what other people are saying about it, I was really anxious and eager to get my hands on one just to open it up and see the insides and figure out how moddable this is. It's pretty pricey at $350 retail, so it may not be for everyone, and we don't even know what can or can't be modded on it yet. So we're going to open it up, we're going to tear it apart, and we're going to figure that out today. So why don't you come along with me as we open it and see what goes on inside. The Victrix Pro Fight Stick features a black brushed aluminum exterior and comes accented with purple throughout the build. The most notable purple accent is the USB cable sleeved with paracord. On the back, the minimalistic design with rounded edges continues with a recessed USB Type-C port. This is a very nice change from the new trend of uniquely pinned or permanently attached cables we're seeing. Unfortunately, the aesthetic is broken up by two cable wrap posts that look like they belong on the back of a 1980s upright vacuum. The beauty of the Type-C port is it is reversible and easy to plug in either way. Those who've been around long enough know that cables can fail, usually at the most inopportune time. We've seen it at EVO in significant matches causing a loss due to a controller disconnection. I fear that the wrapping posts are going to accelerate the USB cable wear, turning these pretty purple cables into landfill fodder. Fortunately, Victrix chose a standard cable type, which means owners will easily be able to replace the cable if it fails. On the bottom of the case, there are two handles for easy carrying and a large latching door that allows access to the inside of the case. The playfield is minimalistic and similar to the new Hori Fighting Edge. The wrist area has a slight downward slope to promote comfort, and the front edge is rounded similar to the back. Looking closer at the layout, you will recognize it is the same standard Vulix layout every manufacturer has adopted. While liked by many, it's still my least favorite as it's uncomfortable to hit the L1 and L2 buttons with my pinky. A not so unique feature that caused a lot of controversy is Victrix's Link 2. It allows you to remove the ball top easily and store it inside the fight stick for easily traveling. It is executed differently than the Freak Mods Link and I found that it was difficult to remove if my hands were dry and had little friction. Removing the ball top requires you to use the included Allen key included inside the case. This is because the shaft is designed to rotate freely and move up and down to actuate the release mechanism. Once the ball top is removed, you will quickly see that it's not a standard Sanwa ball top, but rather a custom ball top designed specifically for the Link 2. It features a recess for the shaft to slide up into when disengaging the ball top from the stick. If you attach a standard Sanwa ball top to the Link 2, you'll notice there's a about a 6mm gap created. Naturally, I had to compare the original link to the Victrix link and found that the original link is shorter. The countersunk ball top provided for the Victrix Pro required a slightly taller shaft to keep the final height as close to standard as possible. It becomes evident that the ball top height on the Pro Fight Stick is slightly taller than the original length by about 3mm when shown side by side. The good thing about the Link 2 is that the base is identical to the original Link, meaning they're completely interchangeable. It's a $30 fix that corrects some of the shortcomings of the Link 2, but I anticipate many will take the plunge.
The auxiliary buttons on top are labeled only when the fight stick is powered up and connected. They consist of PS, share, light, and audio control, a Victrix button, Pro 1, 2, and 3, and finally, options. If you hit the Victrix logo button, it locks all of these buttons. Holding the joystick left and then pressing the Vitrix button for a few seconds will cause the buttons to flash and put the lever in left stick mode. Holding it right and then pressing the Victrix button will cause it to shift to right stick mode. Finally, holding up or down and hitting the Victrix button will revert it back to direction pad mode. The lighting controls are neat but very time consuming for a gimmick that doesn't affect use. You have to hold the light button and then click the lever right or left to cycle through colors to find the one you want. When you flip the fight stick over and open the latched bottom, you're greeted with even more purple. Every cable that can be sleeved is and it's in purple. The button harness is a JST RA type with a custom molded head added on. The JLF is connected with a 5 pin JST PH style connector, again with additional molding on top of the cable ends. The wiring used is small gauge wire similar to that on Hori's fight sticks. To see what the brain of the fight stick looks like, you have to remove 7 Phillips head screws and lift off the plastic ferry. Yes, I know, I didn't do a great job recording this part. Once exposed, the PCB wiring is all connected using JST style connectors and none are glued down. One nice touch I found was the audio cable was sleeved just like the rest of the wiring, even though it's hidden. Removing the connectors was straightforward and simple to do. The flat ribbon cable was easy as well since it's much larger than the standard small ones we're used to finding on the PS4 touchpads. The PCB is held in with six screws. Remove them and the board will lift right out. I'll set this aside so we can look at it later. Taking the lever out isn't difficult, but you want to hold the flat cable away from it during removal so you don't accidentally damage it. Remove the four screws and the lever lifts out. There is a plastic insert that you can remove for alternative lever installations similar to that on the make stick short collar lever. I'll discuss that more later though. The first lever swap I tried was the Hori Hayabusa. It has the same mounting holes as the Sanwa JLF so it should be easy, right? Not at all. There are screws that hold the internal plastic fairing blocking it. Removing them requires a weird triangle screwdriver bit that I don't have which means most people probably don't have it either. Next, I tried a Samitsu lever with a flat mounting plate and ran into similar issues. The plate sat on top of the plastic extrusions that kept the JLF aligned inside the case.
Putting the JLF back in shows why it's an issue. The Samitsu plate is physically bigger than the JLF's. Next, I tried the makeshift JLF mountable Korean lever. The holes lined up in the removable plastic insert let the collar sit unobstructed, but there was still a gap between the lever body and the case. Closing the door wasn't happening, and it's because the body of the lever is too deep for this case. Some Korean lever has to fit, right? The infiltration lever by Sam Duxa was my last hope. I grabbed it off my shelf and it fit right into the case. I feel like Victrix did this on purpose to lure infiltration over to using the Pro Fight Stick. The quick disconnects on the buttons are identical to those used on the TE2 fight stick by Mad Cats. They have release mechanisms you can push with a small screwdriver to easily remove them. I was able to use my fingernail on them fine. The included buttons are Sanwa OBSF snap-ins. I was curious if screw-in buttons would fit because the plastic moldings around the inside looked kind of cramped. The two I tested fit fine, however the low punch and low kick buttons are too close to the medium punch and medium kick buttons to use screw in buttons here. This is a known deficiency with the Vulix layout though, so this isn't really any revelation. The PCB in my fight stick was made in May 2018, and it appears it was the 8th revision of the board, Rev H. I noticed they did put their logo on the PCBs, which was a nice touch. Something that jumped out at me is the checkbox for Xbox or PS4 on the board. I would expect this to be silkscreened on, so I'm willing to bet this one board can support both Xbox One and PS4, but they're programmed for one or the other at the factory. The connectors, as previously mentioned, are all JST style. The microprocessor used is an ARM STM32F401 and has 128K flash space while running at 8 MHz. Basically, it's running the same processor everyone seems to be using, so any latency from the Victrix is likely related to coding. The microprocessor flash pins are exposed on the board, so someone with the knowledge, skills, and desire could theoretically reprogram this board if they wanted. The last touch on this PCB that will make a lot of modders happy is the pinouts are all labeled. It's difficult to tell here because it's not in focus, but in person, you'll easily be able to see what pin does what and what functions it provides. Flipping the board over, you will see a multitude of test points, which are always great candidates for soldering wires and modding situations. Hmm. All right, verdict time. For basic modding, I'm gonna give this thing a B minus or a C. You can change the buttons out pretty easily. Screw-ins aren't gonna work because of the Vulix layout, but that's not a knock on Victrix's fight stick, that's a knock on the Vulix layout itself. The lever situation is weird because it really only does two levers well, the JLF and the Sam Duxa infiltration lever. Everything else had some weird nuances with it that are gonna require additional parts or even maybe some filing inside the case to make them fit. I'm not a huge fan of going that in depth just to replace my lever. The ball top situation is another story altogether. The weird recess in the ball top to make it fit at the right height with the Link 2 is good in theory if you don't want to modify it. However, the ball top is one of the first things most people modify on their fight stick because it's easy and inexpensive. 
If you put something that's not this ball top on it, it will sit higher and that may drive some people crazy. The remedy is easy by just swapping in a regular JLF without their link to, or even doing a simple swap with a Freak Mods link, but that's a $20 to $30 tax on a $350 fight stick already. Now, advanced modding is kind of a different story. We've seen this with the Dragon. When you open it up, there's a lot of fairings inside that hides everything to make it look nice. And unlike the dragon, if you take those fighting those fairings, excuse me, off, you can still get to everything and you know make it work okay. But there's not a lot of room in here, and the way the main board interacts with the aux board and it reprograms the buttons and stuff, as well as controls all the lighting, will make it such that you're going to lose some of those functionalities if you choose to do any sort of advanced mods with this. So because of that and the unibody construction of the fight stick, uh, not allowing you to change any of the layouts, as well as there's not a good place to put artwork unless you do a thin vinyl wrap from say Arcade Shocks Layers FGC, uh, the advanced mod capabilities on this stick is relatively lacking. And I'm actually gonna give this thing probably a D for advanced modding because I assume with a little bit of work, not a lot of work, you're gonna do, be able to do something like LEDs at the inside this at a minimum. Now, the modding grades shouldn't reflect poorly on the stick and its capabilities, nor on its uh, overall aesthetic. When I'm talking about modding, I'm not talking about how well this thing performs or how well it looks, etc. I'm talking about our ability to change it and customize it. On its own, this thing is actually pretty nice looking. Uh, the brushed aluminum is great. It is a fingerprint magnet, which kind of stinks. Um, and the only thing I would really change are these posts. I hate these things. If you turn it this way, it looks like a vacuum cleaner I grew up with in my mom and dad's house back in the 80s, you know, with the crazy cord wrapped all around it. I do like the fact that they did a type C connector on here because that's just a great connector and I'm hoping that over time everyone shifts over to that. And it's also great because they didn't use a funky weird pinout uh, that requires custom cables that only they sell. So that's nice. If this thing ever fails, you can just go to Best Buy and pick a new one up and you'll be off to the races. So overall, I think this is a, a nice stick, but I wouldn't buy it if you really like customizing your fight sticks and making them your own. You're gonna be limited in options, and I don't think that was the goal Victrix was after. I think they wanted to make something that looked nice and premium out of the box, and you just took it and went. So. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope that uh, you guys uh, look at this from a different aspect now. And if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. All that definitely supports me and my ability to continue making these videos. Now, full disclosure, Victrix did send me this fight stick to review, and I appreciate that. However, just because they sent it to me doesn't mean I'm going to do just a no-holds-barred positive review. I want to always give good information out. And so I appreciate them giving me the opportunity to give them an honest assessment on the modability of this fight stick. So, again, if you want to support us, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. Check out my website, jasonscustoms.com, where you can pick up a nice Panzer fight stick, maybe some pro cables, or any of the arcade things that I make to uh, upgrade anything at home you may have. And uh, I will catch you guys later. Thanks.